this lesson, we're going to take a look at the Maya interface, and in particular, where we're going to be inputting Python commands and some other resources that are pretty useful for us to be able to uh, more effectively use Python. So the first thing that we want to look at is this command input right here. Right now it's set by default to Mel. Mel is Maya's embedded language, so that's the default language that Maya uses for a lot of different things um, when we're looking at it. And you'll see that there are some areas where you will have access to the Mel pretty easily. Um, but we're going to be working in Python in this course, so if we click on the word Mel, you'll see that it switches over to Python. So if there is a single command that we want to run or something that's really quick, we can um, type something here. Uh, I'm not going to go into any code in this lesson, I just want to show you guys the interface, but know that you can type in code in this section here. Then if we move all the way over to the right, we have the script editor. So if we were to open that there, we can see that we have the script editor open right now. It's set to Python. By default, you might be in the mail tab. So make sure that you switch over to the Python. Uh, one of the things that I like to do so that I don't get myself confused a lot of times when I'm working is to click on the mail tab, go to commands, and then delete that tab. That way we're only left with the Python uh, tab. If you ever need to create a new tab, you can click, click on the plus button here, and it'll give you an option to create a Mel tab or a, a Python pan tab. You can do that there. Also, if you need to, you can go to commands and create a new tab, and it gets you to the same place. Uh, you can type in commands here. Uh, right now, I didn't, I'm just typing gibberish, but um, all the Python code will go here, and you will see that it starts color coordinating. Right now it thinks that this is a string because it's inside of uh, single quotes. So that's why it's turned in yellow. But as soon as we start writing full scripts, you'll see that the commands and different elements within the Python code are going to be color coordinated in different ways. Um, this is a kind of good way to be able to keep track of everything inside of the script editor here. And also, if you have a typo or you mess something up, it's kind of a good way to catch those things sometimes uh, because you're expecting it to be a certain color, but it didn't happen that way. So um, you can catch those things there. Um, so if I have a whole bunch of stuff here, and like I said, just typing gibberish right now, uh, if I go in and I want to clear this whole section, in the top here, we have the clear inputs. So the script editor down here is called the inputs. And then we have this big section up here that is going to be our history. So um, the history will output mail commands depending on what we're actually doing here. Or if we run a Python command down here, it will pop it up in this section. But let me just create something like a sphere really quick. It creates a sphere in the scene, and you can see the code that it actually ran there. There is also more code that is running in the background um, that isn't popping up here. If you want it to pop up, you can go to history and tell it to echo all commands. So when you turn that on, you'll see that like if I do the hotbox, it shows you what the hotbox of command is um, if you hover over different things you'll see that it gets to those menus and shows you all that code um, a lot of times this is just too much code to go through and you can lose track of where you were so most of the time I work with echo all commands turned off and then if I ever need it I turn it back on um, just like with the script editor down here with the inputs I can clear the history on the top section. And then if I wanted to, I can um, click this and it will clear both sections. So that way we get a clean slate here. On this side, we have the show options and these are pretty important with the way um, we visualize this here. So right now we are 
we can do show history. So this what this button is. It's only going to show the top section. And then I can go on this button, which is going to show our inputs, so our code. And we can just work with the script editor there. And then we can show both. So if we hover over here, you can see it says show both. And that gives us the opportunity to see both the history and the script editor or the inputs down there. Okay, so there's a lot more buttons and we'll get um, through some more of them as we go along. But those are the main things. Also, if we wanted to save a script, I guess that's pretty important. We can go to File, Save Script. Or if we want to open a script, we can open it here to get the help for the Python and Mail commands, any of your scripting stuff. Also, if you go to the main help menu here, we have um, the scripting reference and um, other, tools, other tools there as well. Here, um, if we go to the help, I'm just going to look at the Python command reference. This is one that I will use a lot. Um, you can also look help on Python if you wanted to, but let's look at the help on command reference really quick. That's going to open it up in a browser for us. And basically, it gives us access to the whole Maya command library. So, um, for example, that sphere command that we ran, we could type in sphere and it will search anything that has sphere. Um, we have polysphere, which is the actual command that we ran, and then we have sphere. The sphere is actually creating a NURBS sphere. Um, but it gives us all of the different commands that we're using, and it can organize it in like effects, rendering, animation, modeling, general. So there's a lot of stuff that you can organize it by, but um, to see if you can find the script that you want. But it gives you all the, the flags and information on how to use them. Also, if you scroll down to the bottom of any of these commands, you'll see an example code. So let's say we copy all of this. And then we go back to the Python window here. We can see that um, the coloring of the syntax that we were talking about, that each section, depending on what it is, it's colored in a different way. So um, this is a Python command here. This is a um, command from Maya's library. We're creating a polysphere. Let me delete this. So that we can see. And then here we're creating another polysphere. So we're doing it several times to do different things. So if we were to, we can highlight a single line on the command if we want to run that. Also, we haven't imported Maya commands yet. So let me just highlight all this. These in reds are in com are comments. So comments are never processed when it's reading the um, commands. It's just for us as users to be able to read it if we're using somebody else's code. It gives us notes. Also, if you're writing your own code, you want to take notes and so that you don't forget and you're referencing your script uh, months or years later, you know exactly what you were meaning to do in this section. So I am going to highlight this whole section here and push um, enter on the numeric keypad, that is going to run that whole command. So we can see that it creates the sphere here for us, and then it's using the settings with the flags. So SX is scale X, scale Y, and the radius, or size X, size Y. Actually, let's double check. We can look at the command reference that we opened up, and we can see that we have the different flags and there is a long form and a short form for each flag. Okay, so SX is actually the um, subdivisions in the X and then subdivisions in the Y. So with the sphere that makes sense and then the R is the radius. So we should see that there and that's the size for our sphere. And here you can see that it didn't name it, it's just using the defaults for the name. But if we were to run this command here and push enter on the numeric keypad, you can see that it creates it. 
and it renames it to my sphere because it's saying n, which is the flag for name, is my sphere. So we'll go deeper into coding later on. I just want to show you that there are example codes if you're trying to figure out what something is inside of the code that you're working with. Um, for Maya, you can use the Python reference and that helps a lot to be able to figure out things that you might not know yet. So that's all I want to go over with the interface for right now. And in the next lesson, we're going to go over creating your very own first script and we're going to execute it and we're going to do a few different versions of it so that we can see kind of a very basic version so that it gets you started with that script and then a more robust version that actually creates some 3D geometry for us. So we'll see you guys in the next lesson.